every aspect of our modern day lives has been impacted by technology. From AI to robotics and cloud computing, every single part of our lives has been inextricably tied to the technology that surrounds us. Now, farming and technology may not be the first, first combination that you think of when you think of technology. However, it has changed the face of agriculture and has certainly changed our global food system. Now, with climate change, resource degradation, water scarcity, and a growing population, we absolutely must change the way that we are growing our food and start really driving towards making it much more productive, much more sustainable, and much more efficient. Now, when it comes to technology, there's different ways in which we can apply it. Um, I think when it comes to advances, we must be able to pair together ecologically driven precision agriculture to be able to make the way that we produce our food much more productive. And I think this is the greatest potential with agricultural advances moving forward. So when it comes to our approach, um, we combine all of the technology that is needed to be able to make farming much more efficient, much more productive, and more environmentally beneficial in one deliverable system. And our approach to this combines all of the core components needed for an off-grid two-acre farm in one, one system that can act as a micro-infrastructure. Basically, the way that it operates is three kilowatts of solar panel energy basically turns the system into its own microgrid. So whether it's acting in an urban area or in a really remote region, it's its own microgrid that can act independent of any grid access. Drip irrigation helps save water, extend the growing season, and also stabilize crops throughout drought conditions. Internal cold storage also helps keep those crops fresher longer while reducing post-harvest losses by as much as 80%. We've also connected each system with Wi-Fi capabilities so that the farm has its own hotspot and farmers have their own internet access. So one of the important components about this is that we started to look at how, how we could combine all of these core components and marry them so that the farmer has much more control over the systems and can drive more operational efficiency. Through that, we started looking into developing out our precision agriculture arm. So because each system has Wi-Fi capabilities, we were able to integrate a cloud-based IoT system so that we could monitor and track the on-farm efficiencies while also making sure that we're using energy and water usage as wisely as we possibly could. By integrating sensors into each one of those core components, we can also track our water usage, our energy usage, but give the farmer much more control to be able to make the farm itself much easier to run. Uh, those sensors, we've also programmed to be able to provide alerts to the farmers. Now, one of the questions is, how would alerts be able to benefit the farmer? Let's say that you're a farmer, and you just harvested all of your tender leafy greens and you put them into the cold storage unit to be able to keep them fresher longer before your buyer comes to the farm and purchases them. Well, the next day, let's say you are attending your daughter's graduation or maybe attending a conference in Milan and a heat wave hits. You get an alert on your phone or your email that says, wait a minute, the temperature inside of the cold storage system has increased from 32 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we call this an FYI alert. It's designed to give the farmer notifications and information of what's happening at the on-farm level. So if the temperature continues to rise, not only does our data control system provide that alert, but it will also automatically turn on the cooler so that it brings the temperature down and can help crop loss happening directly in the field and in that cooler space. So if you choose to not necessarily agree with whatever this automation is, you can pull up, pull up from your web-based portal and be able to override that information and make a change if that's what it is that you feel like doing. So the flexibility is there for the farmer. Now, we know technology for technology's sake 
is not a standalone solution at all. But if we combine the right technology and the right data, it can really make a powerful movement for the farmer to be able to increase efficiency, but also help with crop loss that happens and drive more profitability. Uh, let me give you another example of how this can be used. Um, we have started an urban farm with the International Rescue Committee. And we're working with resettled farmers from uh, Bhutan and Nepal as refugees and helping get them back on their feet again through community farming and business training. And Farm From a Box comes in uh, and provides the infrastructure to be able to support that. Now in my home state of California, and certainly in many other locations around the world, water scarcity is a big, big problem. So inefficiencies in irrigation and water management can basically make or break a farm, aside from the environmental impacts and what it is that it can do for profitability. So we're all familiar with the power of drip irrigation. Uh, when compared to traditional irrigation systems, drip irrigation can save upwards of 60% of water savings. Now, when we pair that together with sensing technology, we can drive that efficiency up even more. So what we have done on this particular farm is we have put humidity sensors in all of the different fields on the farm. When those humidity sensors drop to a certain level of dryness, the data controller ends up turning on the pump automatically. It opens the solenoids that go out to that particular field, and the crops are watered precisely when they need it and precisely where they need it. Now, efficiencies like this, what we have found is it saved another 20% on the water usage for the IRC. That's a huge environmental impact, but that also helps drive the profitability and the expenses for the actual farmer. So precision agriculture, when used in this uh, um, ecologically driven way, can also help really impact and drive the economics of the farm. And that's something that we really need to make sure that we're doing, rather than repeating history and just trying to grow more by adding more and adding more. By using it as a regenerative system, it can really help improve productivity and improve the on-farm efficiencies. So another example of how to use this is we recently teamed up with the United Nations World Food Program to launch one of these farms in Tanzania on the far western border of Tanzania near the Congo. So because this farm is operating in such a remote location, information access becomes absolutely vital to make sure that the farm is functioning the way that it needs to be and that the farmers have support as needed. So what we have done with this is since each one of these farms has that Wi-Fi capability, um, our cloud-based IoT system ends up providing open data access to not only the community, but also to the World Food Program so that everyone can see exactly what's happening on the farm and can make decisions from that point forward. The important thing about using sensing technology in this way is that it can ease the path forward for technology transfer and also for training and ongoing maintenance. By using the data system uh, and tracking what the productivity is of remote farms, it can also unlock the potential for connecting those farmers with financial opportunities that they need to be able to grow as farmers and better their lives. If we look at this from the funder's perspective, whether this is private funding, public funding, this ends up increasing the transparency so that you know what's going on with the project, you can track what's going on with the project, and you have a much better idea in terms of what the return on those investments are. So when we combine regenerative farming practices, and I wanna emphasize regenerative farming practices because all too often, Precision agriculture can get bulked together with much more industrialized solutions, and that's, that's certainly not the basis of what it is that we're after. But precision agriculture using a regenerative model can really help provide a clean system for farmers to be able to produce more in a clean way with healthier systems that will last for the long run. And instead of using an extractive, more industrialized way, this can actually help boost both profitability and biodiversity, which is what we really need to happen globally. So technology is simply a tool, 
And one of the important things for us to remember is that tool is up for our direction in terms of how it is that we want to be able to really direct that. So we believe every single person on this planet deserves access to healthy, nutrient-rich food that has been grown in a sustainable way, and every farmer should be able to grow food in a safe, environmentally beneficial way while also providing for the needs of themselves and their families. So as we're walking around and we're looking at these different technologies, let's really think about how it is that we can apply these technologies for the betterment of people, planet, and profits worldwide. Thank you.